Computers have revolutionized the world. The internet has replaced yellow pages, Google Maps has replaced, well, maps, and supercomputers have made nuclear bomb testing unnecessary. While some people focus on how to make computers faster, smaller, and smarter, others have investigated a completely different way to perform computations, quantum computing. The goal of quantum computing is not to replace your laptop with a quantum computer. Your computer is perfectly adept at browsing memes and doing your taxes. But even though modern supercomputers can process petabytes, that's 10 to the 15th bytes, there are many computations that are beyond their reach. For example, scientists would like to understand the nitrogenase enzyme that bacteria use to make ammonia from nitrogen in the air because it could optimize fertilizer production. However, the most powerful modern computer would struggle to simulate just a couple of atoms of this enzyme. Some systems are simply too complex for classical computers, and that is where quantum computers shine. But before quantum computers can start breaking encryption and modeling pharmaceutical drugs, scientists need to prove that this so-called quantum supremacy is even possible. This is done through the use of a black box. What is a black box, you ask? That. That is a black box. Nah, I'm just kidding. A black box is a system which is understood solely by its inputs and outputs with no knowledge of its internal design. It is used to create an algorithm that performs well either on average or in the worst case. This is all very abstract, so let's do a little experiment to illuminate our understanding. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100, and I'm going to ask my two friends to guess the number. Each time they guess, I will respond with higher or lower. Let's see how they do it. Higher. 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 Uh, buddy, you know you don't have to guess in numerical order. You know this is going to take forever. Okay, you can stop. Yes, you got it. So my friend here did eventually guess my number, but notice that it took him a long, long time because he literally guessed 73 numbers. Let's ask my other friend to guess the number. Higher, lower, higher, higher, higher. Whoa, how did she guess so quickly? She used what's called a binary search. Knowing that there were 100 numbers, she guessed the middle number, 50. Then she guessed the number halfway between 50 and 100. Then between 50 and 75. Then between 63 and 75 and she continued to cut the possible search by half until she discovered my number. The key takeaway here is that although both of my friends discovered my number, my friend on the right did it in fewer guesses. This is because my friend made better use of the higher or lower information, and that's the whole idea of a black box. Remember what I said about a black box simplifying a system to its inputs and outputs? That's exactly what happened here. Each of my friends provided an input, a guess, and I provided an output higher or lower. Neither of them were allowed to ask me any questions about the properties of my number, whether it was prime, even or odd, a perfect square, etc. But that's okay because that information was unnecessary. They were capable of discovering my number solely by providing a single type of input and by using the single type of output I supplied. What determined how quickly they discovered my number was how they used the inputs and outputs. My friend on the left simply guessed every number from 1 to 100 in numerical order. He succeeded, but it took him 73 attempts. My friend on the right, on the other hand, used the outputs she received to design a specific strategy. She still guessed, but she guessed more efficiently, which is why it only took her six attempts. The idea of efficiency is essential in quantum computing, and in the next video we'll apply what we learned today to understand how black boxes are used in quantum computing. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.